Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. On the past few episodes, you've been learning how to receive deliverance, healing, and abundant life, how to receive miracles from Jesus. And in this revival, this is what we are seeing, a restoration of the miracles, freedom, healing, the works of the devil destroyed. Now, God's miracles don't happen just any old way, but He has principles, He has order, and He has a way of releasing His miracles. You've been learning in these past few episodes that one of the big keys to receiving deliverance is renouncing, to renounce the open doors where demons have come in, and also renouncing the works of the devil, the bondages in your life. And today, you're going to learn the other major key of receiving deliverance and that is the anointing and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing now this picture here when we look at it in the physical realm a yoke on the shoulder this speaks of a of ox that carry a heavy load, ox or, or cattle that carry goods or people. And how they would do that, how did they still do that in some places today, is they put a brace across the ox's or cattle's back. They put a brace across the ox's back on their neck. And it is a brace, it is heavy, and they are stuck in this brace. They cannot get out of that brace, get out of that yoke on their own. They would need a human to lift it off of them. And so it's very heavy, they're stuck. That's what a yoke is in the physical realm. So in the spiritual realm, there are yokes, spiritual yokes. What a yoke is, is a bondage like that brace around the cattle, but spiritual, a spiritual heavy bondage that cannot go away with your own ability. You cannot take it off on your own, but only the anointing can destroy those yokes. As it says, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you would have life and have it to the full, have it in abundance. And it also says, this is, the, this is the reason the Son of Man came, to destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus on the cross destroyed the curse of the devil, where all of his works, all of the yokes he would bring before, people were stuck with them as a curse. But now Jesus has come to destroy that curse that the devil would have power over God's children. And now we can receive freedom from the yokes that have entered our lives through Jesus. The thing is, is that the devil is still at work today. Jesus has defeated him from having power over us when we put our faith in Jesus. But when we become a believer, we don't automatically just become free of everything. We don't automatically see the devil stop trying to send weapons against us in our lives. It's quite the opposite. The devil is still at work. If you can read the Word of God with revelation, follow the Word of God, be spiritually equipped, you can have victory over every single attack of the devil. The problem is, is that much of the body of Christ has been malnourished in the spiritual things, in the spiritual teachings, knowledge. Their eyes have been shut. And so the devil's still at work and he's able to have victory in the forms of succeeding in bringing yokes in people's lives, stealing, killing, and destroying. Because many believers either aren't serious about surrendering to God and defeating the devil, or they don't know how to defeat the devil. In many believers' lives today, there are yokes. The devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy every aspect of your life, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially, 
relationally. Every part he's after. And so these yokes can be found in every area of your life. You may need freedom today from yokes in several areas of your life. So Jesus has come so that we can be freed from these yokes. And this is what we are learning now, how to receive that freedom from Jesus that he's provided for us on the cross. Yokes are demons or demonic oppression or unclean evil spirits, many names, but it, you can simplify it to a yoke or a chain, a spiritual chain of the devil, addiction, anxiety, depression, panic attacks, night terrors, demons doing things to you in the night, a spirit of rejection, orphan spirit, mute spirit, deaf spirit, inf spirit of infirmity, and many more. These are all yokes. So when it comes to seeking freedom for these yokes, we look in the word of God and we find it clear as day right here, Isaiah 10, 27. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. How? Because of the anointing. The anointing is needed to destroy the yoke. Just as the ox cannot lift off the yoke with its own hooves. It only could come off with the human in that case with the ox. The human hands in the spiritual realm, the yoke can only be destroyed by the anointing, not by physical efforts, not by a loud voice, not by a minister touching a person and pushing them down, not by placing an object on the person's head or body, not by playing special music, by the anointing. You need the anointing to destroy the yokes. The anointing is the power of God, the measure of the power of God that God places in a vessel. That measure of the power of God lives in a vessel and flows through the vessel as the vessel obeys God through their words, through their actions, through their ministry. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, you can see God releasing anointing to his vessels and his vessels walking in mighty power of God. It is the anointing that makes the miracles to happen. God chooses to use people. It's just what he chose to do. He could have done it another way. He could have made miracles come from the sky. He could say, whenever you need a miracle, stand outside your door and I'll make it to rain on you. He could have chosen many other ways, but God chose it this way, that he would put himself, his power in a vessel. This is, I'm saying this by and large, God can do anything. God doesn't need to use people. And there are times where he can choose not to use a person because he's God. And there's always, God's always doing different things, new things. He's not confined to what has to be this way, but he has principles. And when we look through his word, there's a way that he moves in the most part. And that is through people. And he wants you to know that this is his principle. This is his way of releasing his power. So you know where to find his power. So we see in Elijah that he was carrying anointing and he was doing many miracles. Here are some examples. Elijah brought down fire from heaven to defeat his enemies. There was a widow who was hungry and God used him to make there to be miraculous provision, food for her and her son to eat and not die. By the power of God, Elijah raised a dead person back to life. And as a prophet of God, he spoke the word and the rain stopped. It ceased to rain and once again as he spoke the rain then began to fall god also used him to part the jordan river and by the way when we're speaking of vessels who walk in god's power it is god doing all the miracles it is completely his power humans who carry the power of god they do not have uh, their own supernatural power it is purely jesus's power we are just vessels but God really sees it as a partnership that as we obey him, as we do what he says, he releases the power through us. And he's also given us authority on this earth. 
And so Jesus says to the disciples, you heal the sick, you cast out demons, you raise the dead. Well, now it is really Jesus, the one doing it. But because God's given us authority and because he honors this partnership, he chooses to even say, you do it. So side note, when you're talking about in terms of the proper verbiage to use when talking about anointed vessels, like do you say they healed the person or God healed the person? It doesn't matter too much, but what's important is for it to be known that it is Jesus alone who does every miracle and it is Jesus's power. But because Jesus says, you heal the sick, if a person says, this person healed, when it's known that it's God's power and God's getting the glory, that's okay. But it is Jesus's power alone who does every miracle. Now, Elijah had a spiritual son, Elisha, and Elisha served him in his ministry and he received Elijah's mantle which means that same anointing that God entrusted to Elijah, it came upon Elisha. And so then Elijah was doing the same miracles that Elijah did. Elisha also parted the Jordan River by God's power. He healed people by God's power and he rose people from the dead by God's power, as well as many miracles. And even when he died and all that was left was his bones, his bones, carried anointing still. The Bible says that a dead person was thrown on Elisha's bones and that dead person came to life when he touched Elisha's bones. This is a true story, not a fairy tale. Wow, God's anointing is powerful. Moses was another one who walked in the anointing. There's so many miracle signs and wonders that God did through Moses. God used Moses to do mighty signs and wonders and miracles that confounded the enemies, the Egyptians who held them in bondage, confounded them, made them to fear God, and ultimately led them to be delivered from the several hundred years of slavery. God used Moses to cause supernatural plagues to happen, and God used Moses to part the sea, which was the moment that they were able to be delivered from Egypt, and the seas came back together and all their enemies were washed away. And Moses had a spiritual son as well, Joshua. Joshua, Joshua also walked in the anointing. And he did, once again, a similar miracle as Moses where God used him to part a sea. He also used him to stop the sun. And then in the New Testament, we see God doing the same thing, using vessels with his power to do miracles. Jesus talks about how he is giving authority and power over demons, over all demons and all sicknesses. Jesus says, I'm giving it to you. So he's making it clear, this is how I'm gonna do miracles. I'm gonna do it by the power I put in you. He says, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. These signs shall follow those who believe. They will lay their hands on sick people and they will get well. They will cast out demons. Jesus says, you shall do the things I did and greater things. Even greater things. That means there is no limit to what God wants to do through his vessels, by his power. He wants to heal every kind of sickness, the sicknesses that were not around in the biblical times. He, he wants to and is going to heal all those sicknesses through his vessels. He is going to cast out every kind of demon that wasn't even talked about in the Bible. Every kind of demonic spirit and yoke he will cast out through his vessels. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. This is powerful because it shows us what they did in the times of the Acts church, which is our example today of how we should do church and how to receive miracles. So when they needed miracles back then, they located the anointing. They recognized that God had chosen to use Apostle Paul with mighty anointing. They recognized that the anointing was flowing through Apostle Paul. So they needed to position themselves where Apostle Paul was ministering and receive through that vessel of Apostle Paul. So in this case, that anointing was so strong, extraordinary. Another translation says unusual miracles were happening through Paul. I mean, it was just emanating from him so strongly that they were just bringing handkerchiefs and aprons to his 
body, to his skin, just touching his body. And then laying it on the sick and demon possessed and immediately demons were fleeing and the sick were being healed. You see how effortless it was, how it was purely the anointing that was making the demons to go and the sicknesses to leave. It's not even saying that Paul was saying anything, laying hands. It was just simple. The transfer of anointing. We also see that Apostle Peter was a vessel of the anointing and that he walked in high level anointing as well. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. Verse 15, as a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. The people in those times were doing the same thing as they were doing with Apostle Paul. They were recognizing where the anointing was flowing. They recognized God had chosen to use Apostle Peter. High level anointing was in Apostle Peter. And so they positioned themselves under his ministry. They knew anointing would just be flowing from him. So they just had to position themselves. Simply that. And you can see how these these miracles were happening so effortlessly once again, just as with Paul. Many people think that to see people be delivered, be healed, we have to put a lot of effort into it, a lot of physical effort, whether it's a loud voice, whether it's laying hands, and unfortunately sometimes people are pushing, we should never push. <laughs> it doesn't say push people, it says lay hands. <laughs> and let the power of God push people, touch people. A lot of people think that's the way that we need to put effort into it, but God wants to show how powerful he is. But we have to step back, get out of the way, and allow him to have the full glory, allow him to show himself, to show how mighty he is. And so this is so powerful. They were just coming, positioning themselves like near Apostle Peter. And so his shadow falling from the sun, beaming on him, would pass by people. And when it did, demons were literally just leaving. Sick were being healed. So simple, so powerful, so effortless. Why? Because he carried true anointing. And the Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, period. Not anointing and human effort and loud voice, period. The anointing. And the anointing of God is so powerful. You know how powerful God is? We don't need to help him. When we really, what we need is the actual anointing. Many people are missing the anointing. And so they're trying to compensate, but the compensation does not work. We need the anointing. And it says in verse 16, all of them were healed. All, all of them, all of them, not 50%, not even 99%, all of them. Why? Well, one of the big reasons why is because Peter actually carried true anointing and the anointing of God is perfect and without flaw and the anointing of God makes every demon to tremble and leave. They cannot stay. The anointing of God makes all darkness to leave. The anointing of God is like fire coming and burning away the darkness. Oh, how we need the anointing. How to find the anointing. Find where the anointing is flowing through vessels, through anointed vessels to here today. Revivals now, and when we say revivals now, it means that God has poured his anointing upon vessels and he's releasing this anointing through them. So where do you find them? Well, it's important to understand that the anointing is something that's rare today. And in this revival, it's becoming less rare, hallelujah. But we are just beginning this revival, so it is rare. Seeing everybody healed like they were in Acts is pretty much kind of unheard of today. It's rare. And the reason being is that the anointing isn't given to every single child of God, but only those whom God can entrust it with. It says in Matthew eleven twenty-five. 25, this is when the disciples first came back from casting out demons and they told Jesus and they were excited like, wow, just like the demons obeyed you, they obeyed us. And so you can see they had anointing. 
Jesus had released true anointing and authority to them. And so then Jesus, one of the first things that he says after they report back is he praises God. He says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. You have hidden these things. In the Passion Translation, it says, you have hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and wise in their own eyes. Instead, you have shared it with those who humble themselves. Yes, Father, your plan delights your heart as you've chosen this way to extend your kingdom by giving it to those who have become like trusting children. So this reveals to us that God literally hides the revelation of how to receive the anointing and walk in the anointing and authority. He hides it from many people. He hides it from those who are proud. It does not say he hides it from the unbelievers and reveals it to the believers. No, because a lot of believers are proud. A lot of believers are not like children, childlike, humble. He only reveals it to the humble and childlike. That is why the anointing is rare today. Because it does not come automatically like the Holy Spirit comes automatically when you give your life to Jesus. The anointing is the Holy Spirit, but, but there are many dimensions to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in every believer when you give your life to Jesus immediately. And then when you truly surrender everything because that's usually different from when you first decide to accept Jesus into your life as your savior there's a time later when you with with spiritual eyes open up decide to lay down everything your dreams your wills your plans and you mean it with your whole heart and you earnestly want all of God and and when that happens you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon you as fire and the Bible talks about how when people were baptized in the Holy Spirit in the Bible, they began to speak in tongues and you receive power. And this is the place where you are first being readied, being prepared, prepared for ministry. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone when they're ready to surrender. But there are a lot of people who have that moment of surrender, but, aren't, but, but are not seen as trustworthy yet in God's eyes. Meaning they have that moment of surrender, but they might backtrack. They might only surrender for that one day. They might not be humble. They, there's a lot of people who pray in tongues but who are prideful and are living sinfully, lukewarm. So the anointing God only releases to those whom he can entrust. Where you have to go through tests, God has to see, I've tested your character again and again. I've refined your heart. I've transformed you to become like me so much that I know that when I entrust you with this anointing, you will truly be able to steward it according to my perfect will and not abuse or misuse it ever. There are different dimensions of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit you receive when you first give your life to Jesus. Then the baptism of the Holy Spirit is more of God. It's literally receiving more of God in you, more of the Holy Spirit. And then the anointing is receiving yet more more of God. But this aspect is specifically for ministry. It's specifically for God to use you in power. It's a gift for ministry. It's a gift to be used selflessly for God's will, for his people to heal, deliver, raise the dead, destroy the works of the devil. God is restoring the anointing in this revival and he wants to use you in his anointing. So today there's going to be a couple of things that happens. First, if you need freedom, healing, miracles, Jesus is going to release it by the power of his anointing. Secondly, God wants to use you in his anointing. Impartation of anointing will be released to you and you will truly see God work in power through you according to his perfect timing and according to exactly how he wants to use you in his power. So as you've learned in the prior episodes, renouncing is, a, is an important key to be free. So you can begin to renounce right now. If you need freedom, renounce all of the open doors where the devil has come in your life. If you've sinned, if you spoke words of death, if you've done witchcraft, if you were abused, if there was past witchcraft in the family line or if the past family line has opened up doors to the enemy, you can begin to speak that right now. 
I break every generational curse and I break every curse off of you. I cancel every covenant of death. I break every demonic soul tie. I break every curse of poverty and I detach you from all you've renounced. I command on three, every spirit attached must leave you in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing upon you. Be filled with abundant life. Be filled with peace and joy. And I speak complete freedom, complete healing over you in Jesus' name. And now lift your hands to God as this anointing comes upon you for you to walk in God's power. I release this anointing upon you now. Be filled with this power of God to do the impossible, to do miracles. I declare the sick to be healed through you. I declare demons to be cast out by you. In Jesus' name, I declare people's eyes to open up to God's love. In Jesus' name. Here is a clip that shows the power of the anointing to destroy every yoke. Because when you can just come to where the anointing is, all of the darkness that you've been in bondage with has to go. Let's leave her on three in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And fire. Jesus is so powerful. Jesus is so powerful. All demons are exposed and have to leave today. I break every demonic soul tie. I cancel every curse that every witch sent to him. Every satanic spirit must leave him on three in Jesus' name. One, two, three. You are free! Praise God! <laughs> Hallelujah! Complete freedom is yours. I declare it is yours. Thank you, Jesus. Almost go the guys, the now in Jesus, 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 Jesus' name. Let's get it. Thank you for watching. I can't wait for the next episode. Revival is now.